Fantastic. Welcome aboard. Welcome to another meeting of the Space Coast Progressive Alliance. Uh, this is Candy Green, our Vice President. And I would like to welcome you to our Open Minded Mic Night. This is a wonderful, fun event. Whatever we do this, it's a lot of fun because everybody gets a chance to come up and we get to hear a, a diversity of opinions. Uh, the one basic ground rule is to be polite. You know, we're asking uh, people sometimes to, to get up in front of a room and haven't done a lot of public speaking in front of a group. So let's be supportive of each other. Let's be respectful of each other. That's, that's pretty darn simple. Um, I would like to thank our first Thursday program planners for tonight's uh, for the work for tonight's event. Uh, uh, tonight especially, Larry uh, Abdullah, where are you, Larry? Larry, right here, and, and Paul Halford, who was just at the mic a moment ago, Paul's right here, have done a fantastic job putting this together. Thank you, guys. I would like to thank uh, the Jotkoffs. Uh, Pat is here. Uh, where's Pat? brought a, a raffle gift for us, a beautiful basket. She makes the most beautiful baskets. Uh, and they have raffle tickets in the back. If you haven't seen the basket, be sure you take a look at that before we go. It will be, it is done. All done. Hold on. All right, you want to talk about raffles? The raffle has a beautiful basket that Linda's limping up here with. <laughs> and a bird feeder. Bird there's a bird feeder in the back. Bird house? Bird feeder. Neat looking bird feeder. So what we're going to do, the first ticket we pull will be for whichever one you choose, and then the second one gets the other one. Ooh, a double header. <laughs> uh, tonight's the double header. Are you excited? Can you feel the excitement, guys? Woohoo! This is, this, this is why... <laughs> And I'll tell you what, that is a beautiful bird feeder. That's really cool. So uh, if, if uh, there's no other good reason to come to open mic night, it's because we have amazing things to give away. Again, thanks to the John Cox. Hey, I also want to thank our speakers uh, all here tonight, folks who have prepared, got all their stuff together, have an idea to share, have some excitement to share. I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, and I'd also like to take a moment to say thanks to those of you that came to the Melbourne uh, city council meeting uh, was it a week and a half ago uh, they were looking at the issue of forming a sustainability committee and you know what we packed the house it was fantastic and folks from environmental groups from the SCPA uh, from other groups that, that packed the house and spoke aggressively to the uh, to the city council to say hey you know what sustainability is important to <coughs> us for so many reasons and you know what? There was some resistance on the city council. Hey, we have 17 committees already. Why would we want another one? You know what? They decided to proceed. And so I think that it's, it's first of all, very important to say thanks to all of you that, that came to that meeting and those of you that spoke. Because speaking out makes a difference. Uh, now what we're going to have to do is they pass the resolution. Now we're going to have to keep the pressure on so they pass the ordinance. We're going to be watching for that. We'll let you guys know when that comes up because we're gonna wind up having to go back, I'm sure, to pressure them, make some false phone calls to get them to pass that ordinance. We need a sustainability community or <coughs> committee in this, uh, in this city. Uh, it's time for our two minute community announcements. Actually, you know what, let me take a quick break and I'm gonna pass it to Candy so that you can make the pitch for contributions. Please, please. Please. Oh, that. Well, we do pass the hat because we have to take to this building each week. So. We can get that going, just going around. This is, I, I think I'm all about begging for money tonight. Uh, first, you'll see on your chair that September 7th, we do have Alan Grayson coming to speak to us at the Vieira Auditorium. <laughs> We're very excited about this, and so is he, by the way. So prior to that, we were going to have a little teeny fundraiser. We're not going to make off that much money off of it, but it seemed like too good an opportunity to pass up. So at the Holiday Inn near Vieira, right by, by, right by that Chick-fil-A. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, we're going to have a meet and greet from 5 to 6, and it's going to be a limited amount of people. It's $35. And and you're going to have enough to eat so that you don't have to worry about when you get to Vieira Stadium, you're starving. So we added a little more. It's, you know, it's a wine, coffee, water, and some nice hors d'oeuvres. Enough, enough to fill you up that you'll be fine. Oh, yeah. All the money goes to me. 
No, it's a hat. <laughs> oh, it's a fundraiser, and it is for the SCPA. And as you know, we rarely do a fundraiser, so we need to do a little bit because we're paying for a few things for this that are beyond usual. I do have, you have on your seat, the Alan Grayson announcement. On the back is a more formal looking invitation. If any of you need the formal invitation in the form of cardstock in an envelope, I printed up a hundred of these because I know some people would rather get an invitation in an envelope and have it be a real invitation rather than a piece of paper with a couple things on the front and back. So if, if you want these, I've got plenty of them. Just see me at the back afterwards. The third and final thing, or 14th and final thing, <coughs> is we've been working hard to get new t-shirts. Apparently we haven't had new t-shirts in a long time. I love the ones we have, but we have complaints that black is awfully hot in Melbourne. And as some of wore black pants tonight, just walking from <laughs> the car to the ear was hot. So we have a pretty color blue that's kind of represented on the wall back there. We have two different designs. We think we're printing up both designs. What we've done is we've made these little dots that say small, medium, large, and extra large. We would like you to go back there when you get a chance and put a dot next to the t-shirt that you think you would like, or both. So that gives us an idea of how many to print because we don't want to just print too few. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you very much. What? Well, it'd be nice if you indicated the gender, because one of the things we are going to do is women are going to have the v-neck that so many women have requested. Thank you. Thank you. I saw a few other people with v-necks. And thank you. And the men are going to have the regular t-shirt neck, the crew neck, or whatever. You know, that's sexist. Yeah, what if, <laughs> like you. I want some V-necks. Like you. You can wear the V. I can wear the V. You can get the V. What about, what about the material of the T-shirt? The material is actually wonderful. Ask your friend Bonnie. We spent a lot of time looking at um, materials, and we're going to a place in, in the art district to get these printed in a, in a really cool way. They're going to be black, not all it's not all screen printed with a bunch of rubberized stuff on it. It's just going to be what you see back there, that design. There are two different ones. And that's going to be the design of them. And they're going to be it's more contemporary looking, we think, more graphic looking. Hope you like them. I'd like to hear comments about them after you tell me what the material is. Oh, it's cotton. It's going to be 100% cotton. I think there's a little mix in it because it's very soft. And the reason we chose that is they hold up a whole lot better than cotton. Cotton does not hold up. The collars on cotton don't hold up. Okay, I will bring you six cotton ones that I have for 20 years. <laughs> well, please wear them all at once. Yes, I will. <laughs> Thank you, Candy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank you. Candy. Let's hear a round of applause for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for getting the business done. It's very important. You know, we always hate to ask for money. And by the way, I should say thanks to those of you that have been contributing to our new legal defense fund. Uh, I tell you what, it's it's uh, a real interesting project for us to, to look at some of these folks who have been stuck in jail uh, sometimes for long periods of time just because they can't make bail, or because they can't uh, afford an attorney. If we can throw a couple bucks to help them uh, get fair treatment, uh, it's wonderful. So my thanks, I tell you what, the Derricks just came through for us with a, with a wonderful contribution. Thank you so much. I really, John and Marge, where's Marge? There she is. You guys, you guys make me proud, really. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so stay tuned for news from that front. Next up, we have some community announcements. Just uh, three people, I think, that have community announcements. The first was, was Katie Green. Uh, the next, Pat Jotkoff. Pat, where are you? Here she is, all right. Hey everybody, let's give a round of applause for young Pat, come on. I just wanted to let you know that I'm hosting a fundraiser and meet and greet and uh, informational thing for Planned Parenthood on September 13th at my home from six to eight. There will be food and drinks. They're sending the medical director and three of the board members and then Anna, of course, who we all want to see all the time 
and um, some of the other people that work there. So we're trying to get some medical facilities here for women in this county that we don't have right now, and the more people we can get to participate and show their support, either financially or just show up as a body to say, we support you, is what we're looking for. There's um, these little flyers in the back, and RSVP to Brianna, and you'll have a fun time. It's always a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And young Dan Bennett from BFT talking about the Labor Day picnic. Dan, where are you? There he is. Come on up. Come on up, Dan. That's the Come on up. That's the you want the microphone, you know. You can't do it without the mic. You made, you made the whole announcement for me. Thank you. Thanks. I, I am uh, Dan Bennett from the Brevard Federation of Teachers and the humble president of the local teachers union. And ever since I became part of the officer corps of BFT, I've been wanting to do a Labor Day picnic because that's our party. That Labor Day is our holiday, right? Right, Karen? It's the house of the brought, brought to you by the brave folks that have uh, stood together unionized for, uh, for over 100 years. And uh, this year, we're finally doing it. Labor Day, uh, the Labor Day picnic will be on Labor Day. Labor Day this year is a Monday, September 4th. It's always a Monday. And we're going to be at Wickham Park, and all the local houses of labor are going to uh, throw in for the food, and the DJs, and the bounce house, and the fun, and it's going to be a great time. And all we ask for is a donation to local veterans groups. That's that's going to be the uh, recipients of, of that. So come on out Labor Day to Wickham Park, 11 to 4. And I can't expand on that any further. Who's next? Yes. I I heard a rumor that. <laughs> he can bring your bring your Medicare questions for, for Congressman Posey. I'm sure he will. Line, if he shows up, he gets the microphone and and he will line up for questions. If he if he that'll be if there's a, if there's a Posey sighting, it'll be it'll be worked out. We just might trap him in the bounce house. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Make sure have a sheet the service. Labor Day, what a fun opportunity. Great chance to get outside and sweat together. Yes, woohoo! Barbara Vigner, I know you said you had a quick announcement to make as well. This will be our last announcement, then we're going to proceed to our events. Does anyone here remember Community Harvest in downtown yes. Yes. I have two of their original cookbooks back at my vegetarian table back there. And I'm offering them for a donation of $10 to the Space Coast Progressive Alliance. So if anybody's interested in making a $10 donation and getting these awesome cookbooks, let me know. Thank you, Barbara. That's very nice. It's a surprise. Thank you very much. And I'll tell you what, guys, any last minute announcements? Anybody want to? Well, you know what? I think it's time for me to hand the microphone. Oh, yes. I don't know. What would you like to do? You want to save it for later? I'll, I have it listed. Midway between the speakers. Oh, good, 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 good. She was just asking about the raffle. So, if anybody's thinking about that raffle back there, that cool bird feeder, the neat basket, if you want some raffle tickets, they're back there hiding for you. So, I'm going to hand the uh, the microphone over to young Paul Halpern. Here he goes. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, thanks, Phil. Phil is just such an outstanding president of our board of Welcome to Progressives Got Talent. Oh. <laughs> I want to again thank where's Larry? Larry, Larry Abdul really did the heavy lifting on putting this together, so thank you, Larry. Wherever you are, hopefully this didn't disappear because you're a speaker. We have some rules. There is a time limit to your speech. So we're asking you for three or four minutes. I know that's really difficult to do, but I'm not going to introduce what your topic is. I'm just going to introduce you so you can talk about your topic. My suggestion to you is don't take a lot of time introducing yourself unless it's vital to your topic. Spend your time on, on your topic. We're asking you that your topic not be anything that involves self-promotion or trying to sell a good or a service. You know, that wouldn't be appropriate for here, but promoting an idea is a great is a great thing. There will be a couple minutes reserved for question and answers after each presentation. Sometimes there won't be questions and sometimes there will be a few, but we want to keep things moving along. If you don't follow these rules, we have Secret Service agents sitting on the audience and they will they have a hook and they will put you outside and you'll never be heard from again. Uh, I want to go 
over the orders just so that the speakers are prepared of who goes next. Oh, and I think I want to talk, to talk about Hannah White here, who is going to remind you if your time is running out. This is Bonnie here. She'll remind you if your time is, is running out going over in, a, in the nicest possible way. And again, we have that hook if, if you ignore her, her reminder. So I'll go over the, the order really quickly, and then the first person will come up, and the second person will sit kind of on deck over here so that we can keep things moving quickly. Midway through this, we will announce the winners of the raffle. Those raffle gifts are great. I don't think a lot of people bought raffles, so your chances of winning are pretty high. So you have, you have time to get up and go buy some more raffles. So here's the order. Some people didn't answer when we called them, so if you're if you came late, let us know. So here's the order that we have. Terry, Harvey, Amy, Spencer, Joe, Lauren, John, Rakan, Vicki, Larry Abdullah, Nancy, Gail, Nan, Marge, Karen, Phil, if I let him, and Larry Go. Okay, so we're ready to go. Everybody ready to go? Anybody have questions about how we're going to do this? No? Okay. So Terry? You are now, and second in line is Harvey, so Harvey can have a seat up here. So we'll keep it Hi, I'm Terry Sanders. I'm the president of the Florida National Organization for Women in Florida, and um, we're going to be supporting the bill. So we're currently working with legislators in Florida um, for a child marriage bill. That's probably what it's going to be called. In uh, 2015, there were 300 um, children under the age of 18 married to many of them to adults. A few might you might have a 14-year-old uh, girl married to a 16-year-old boy. Now, let me uh, acquaint you with our current law. So, the current law in Florida is the age is 18. However, the caveats are what we're trying to illuminate, and that is if the girl, if both of them actually have parental consent. When is consent coercion? How do you know? And the clerks in the courts do not know. So the clerks who are giving out these marriage certificates, there are actually examples where girls have been there crying, and they and they're underage, they're under 18. Their parents are there, and they were given a marriage certificate and married. So um, that's one of the caveats today. Another is if she is 16 or older and pregnant. So then she doesn't even need parental consent if she's pregnant. So why are we pursuing this? We are going for, we want to remove all the caveats and say adults should be marrying adults. Anyone under the age of 18, they can't file for divorce. So if this doesn't work out, they're 16 years old, they can't file until they're 18. There's so many things they can't do as basically children, right? That they can't even go to a domestic violence shelter, which there is a very high percentage of children who are in domestic violence situations, much higher than older marriages. Um, so you can't check into it. Children cannot check out in on their own. They have to, you have to be an adult to get into a domestic violence shelter. So we are working with both Democrats and Republicans. Uh, Republicans are signing on to this bill and we're going to actually try to get it submitted by a Republican and maybe have a better chance of actually moving it through and getting it signed. So I think that's my basic uh, information. Anyone have questions? I do. So I've worked with um, children who have been victims of this, 12 year old girls, 14 year old girls throughout my life. It's a form of human trafficking. Um, and, it, and it exists like this in many different states, not just, not just in Florida. My question for you that you might not be able to answer is that why would any single legislator not vote to have this? Who, whose special interest is this in? Uh, 
surprisingly, we are anticipating obstacles. So, I, I mean, I have a, a whole fact sheet to answer those questions. Their questions are going to be, what's wrong? What's the difference between 17 and 18? What if they're, in, one of them is going in the military and he might not come back? Um, there, there are some uh, religions that uh, try to focus on 17-year-olds. Uh, so there are uh, actually we expect some pushback, and the pregnancy thing—that's going to be a big one. They're going to, you know, oh, for the sake of the child. Well, you know, oh, statistically, these girls, 75% chance they're going to be divorced. And if they have that child as a single parent, rather than marrying the child or adult who has impregnated them, they have a 50% better chance that they are going to stay in school, graduate, and actually become economically independent, whereas the 18, the younger than 18 year olds, 50% of them end up dependent economically on their spouse. Thank you. Those legislators that bring up any objections, we should make sure to give them plenty of press. So people know yes. who is in the way. Hallelujah. Okay. Next is Harvey. Harvey and is Amy here? Did Amy show up? So Amy's not here, so one deck will be Spencer's. Okay, very good. Okay, good evening. Uh, it was mentioned about parking earlier, and uh, it seems that if you are on the House or Senate from Washington, D.C., after you walk across the water, we will have people to carry you in. <laughs> That's my public service now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my name is Harvey Kishner, and uh, I hail from Fairfax, Virginia. Um, at age 20, I was drafted into Vietnam, and uh, we actually believed it was for the freedom of the people of South Vietnamese and so forth. Apparently, it was a misdirection. Great illusionists and magicians use misdirection to fool you. And after we got to Vietnam, those young ones like myself that were just drafted out of high school, we realized it has nothing to do with the freedom of the people. The people had landlords that were oppressing them and taking half of what they owned. Before that, the French were there for 11 years. Before that, the Japanese, the people that been under the thumb. It has nothing to do with freedom. They, they're apolitical. They don't care what flag flew. So that was misdirection by our country. And uh, I stayed in the military, had a peaceful 20 years. And my last tour was Desert Storm in 91. And again, we were told for the freedom of the, the people there. We got there after a few weeks and realized it's not about freedom. Then they said it was about weapons. Well, let me tell you, those people have been fighting for 6,000 years over there. The British were there in Afghanistan in 1904. They got soundly defeated. The uh, Russians came in for 11 years, couldn't do anything. Why are we there? And it, it really boggled my mind. Why, what are we doing there? So I have first-hand experience in seeing this, and my humble opinion is we have no business being there. The French, the Japanese, these people in Vietnam, and all over the planet, it's misdirection, which is what great illusionists use. Now, for over 5,000 years, these folks have been battling over there. Thank goodness they don't trust each other. It's a good thing they don't trust each other. Because, uh, I've seen what tribal warfare and ancient hatreds can do. And you probably see it on the news. Anyway, the uh, issue for tonight is our alleged leaders and our alleged <coughs> congressmen and senators. I have had 71 years on this planet and I am really overly sick and tired of why, it, why aren't we waking up and turning off entertainment tonight and being vocal. Congress exempted themselves from the health care. They have their own. They actually, the first thing they did was exempt themselves. Uh, they are civil servants, supposedly. How do we get to a point where there's 70-something lobbyists for each congressperson in the House? If you and I practice lobbyists, we would be in federal prison for racketeering. That's what it is. It's racketeering, where they put their own interest at the tail of a bill. We shouldn't be putting up for that. We shouldn't have that. I'm sorry. I'm asking for all of us to speak up, be vocal, wake up, be very vocal, and tell the Congress and our alleged leaders, this has got to stop. This is enough is enough. And that's all I've got to say, just like that. We all 
all agree. Yes. <laughs> Are you a member of a, an organization, or do you do anything about this? Well, I have. I do petitions on uh, the, uh, organ the organizations that have petitions. We need a million and a half to tell Congress. We've only got 120, you know, 1.2 million. So we can't even get 1.5 million to get a petition through. People have diversions, as they did in Rome. Entertainment, sporting events, all these diversions to keep our eye off of the real issue. Oh, those evil. Our people have been dumbed down and so are the children. Um, but I am a member of the Disabled American Veterans, life member, a member, a member of the VFW, the uh, Vietnam Veterans, and the uh, Rolling Thunder. I was in one of the bad biker guys that delivered things to the children and the burn victims. And except for that, I don't join anything else. But I, I see what happens when you get drafted, so I'm not going to join. Any more questions? <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Okay. Next, next is Spencer Wold, and after him is Joe Schmidt. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, my talk is going to start on equal points, which is find this balance, state of equilibrium, balance, equilibrium, um, and I uh, did a presentation at a, um, well, it was a, uh, a group of expiring uh, writers, and my talk was on how to feed the creative process through nutrition. And the importance of making healthy choices because uh, our body and brain is fed by the nutrition that we get from the food that we eat. And the problem uh, many times is related to uh, complicated foods and dense uh, proteins which overtax the system. So, two nights after I did the presentation, the uh, moderator, or uh, actually the creator of the class, Mary Esther Mellows, called me and said, what you're about is equal poise. Never heard of it. She says it's in the dictionary. And so I began using it, and I created an organization titled World Equal Poise because at uh, World Organization, uh, my intention is to influence the wellness of humanity by providing information about choices and simplifying those choices through literally a nutrition, an apple, a peach, an orange, uh, grapes, and letting alone the dense items such as uh, animals, uh, protein from animals that we've been sold to build goods that involves um, making choices that cause problems like the animal protein cause and, and diabetes causes, uh, um, and diabetes is caused by milk and the um, Arthritis is caused by the uric acid that's created from the processing of the animal protein. So those are our circumstances that we can take charge of by defining uh, more specifically, more directly, what we put into our body. The, um, I formed a non-profit organization, World Equipoise, in California in 1983. 1984, it was approved and then federally a 501c3. I have contacted California, it's been a month and a half ago, to try to get copies of that, because through my moving and so on, and I had a building that was arsoned and there was a lot of archives that were lost. So I have um, done a great deal of video documenting presenters of wellness that have um, 
years and years and years of experience far beyond me and they have credentials. I kept getting feedback that my, I didn't have any credentials so I should go to school. So I decided to videotape and I videotaped and um, I got all these videotapes. I was at every event. Problem was my building was arsoned and my videos were destroyed. And uh, this is up in Ohio. So I, uh, you know, it's been a bit of a challenge to keep, continue moving forward with this project because of uh, circumstances. But uh, I come here to each of these meetings. Usually, each of them are well oriented, and, and I would like to uh, interest you folks in the process of uh, perhaps considering joining this uh, organization that was originally created in California and now will be um, recreated in Florida if I ever get the paperwork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you and appreciate the, uh, your attention. Thank you. Uh, what's the name of the new movie that's out that talks about, or what's the name, Health Something? Uh, what the Health. What the Health is an outstanding movie, it's on Netflix, that is very visually depicting everything that Spencer is, is talking about, about where our food comes from and all the lies that they're telling us and what the food does to us. Any questions for Spencer? Great. I want to mention uh, up a copy of the book by Nancy McLean called Democracy in Chains. Democracy in Chains, and I want to recommend that uh, they only have a few copies in the county, but uh, you might try to acquire a copy. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. <laughs> Your next we have Joe, please. Lauren, 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 Lauren here. Okay, so after, after Joe will be John. Joe, welcome. Good evening, everybody. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Jo Shim, and my topic tonight is a single payer system for the US. Why now is the time? <laughs> Many Americans lack health insurance. Two to, uh, 22 million stand a chance of losing it if a bill goes through the Senate, and many, many more are underinsured. The US healthcare system is very, very complicated, very complex, and I believe that a single payer system may be what is needed to simplify the system. The US spends millions of dollars on healthcare um, per capita, or on healthcare in general, and much more on per capita than other industrialized countries. And yet we have either average outcomes or worse outcomes. So today I want to talk to you about uh, electric school buses. Uh, anybody aware of even the availability of them? So yes, yeah, so it's a new player in the alternative transportation arena. Um, they are, so there are probably four or five manufacturers currently in the US and Canada that produce uh, or start to produce uh, electric school buses. Um, so the biggest obstacle for the school bus that's pure electric is they are uh, expensive. They are about two to 2.5 times more expensive than uh, regular diesel buses. And the benefits are very obvious. Um, so they are fuel efficient, low maintenance, and um, uh, quiet. Also, they can possibly act as uh, backup energy generators and benefit the grid. So like from the science side, we realized many benefits of the school buses that's electric. Um, but in reality, there are not many school districts that are willing to adopt these buses because they have very strict, uh, very like tight budget every year. So uh, there's this new opportunity uh, that's called the VW Settlement Bond. Anybody aware of that? So for, for everybody's benefit, um, 
this uh, VWO settlement bond was a result of the, the diesel gate. Um, so they were basically fined about $4 billion. Half of that uh, goes into some like um, zero emission and, uh, vehicle um, kind of um, area. Another half get distributed to all the states. And Florida gets about $150 million for the course of 10 years. And um, the purpose of this is to displace the, uh, the nitrogen oxide that's being produced by the, the cheated VW vehicles. So any technology that can benefit the environment can possibly apply for this fund. So in our center, we think it's a great opportunity to use this fund to offset the, the upfront cost of the electric school buses. So the biggest like kind of pushback is that the general publics are not very educated about the availability of the technology and there's a lot of worry that it's a new technology, what do we do, and how do we train the drivers and everything. So it's not only the upfront cost. But I think um, uh, the disconnect that I feel the most is that we don't know how to escalate it from the community level. Like how do we, uh, let's say, talk to the Brevard County School Board, like they have to be the one who push for this, who fight for the VW fund. We are a university, we're not, we, own, we don't own school buses, so I feel um, maybe somebody here has an idea of how to even start this conversation, how to, what's the most important people to talk to, and we definitely um, want to like, hear the opinions from, from the community, from the politics side. We're, we're scientists, we don't know too much about that, so yeah, <laughs> that's, that's uh, what I want to talk about. Thanks. Get a chance to drive a Lion liquor school bus about a month and a half ago. I moved the space for Stevie drivers as well as this one. Oh, I, um, I think I remember. I was there. It was a great experience, yeah. and, and the fact that most people don't even know that that technology exists is one of our greatest challenges. I think somebody from Brevard School Board, Brevard School Board was there, but yeah, indeed there were they sit there with their arms and legs crossed and they didn't even know what questions to answer. Yeah, but that, but that's that's part of the answer is that we need to get. Right people who run for the school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Make it seems that the manufacturers of the school bus could help you with those kinds of questions. In other words, they're they want to sell their buses, so they should be able to provide uh, expertise on how to approach school boards and also to apply for these funds. They are trying, believe me. Yes. Uh, what organization do you work for? I work for uh, University of Central Florida, okay. uh, Florida Solar Energy Center. Oh, all right. Thanks, Nick. Is this yeah. uh, also not just school buses, but public transportation? Are they potential recipients of this subsidy? Uh, yes, they are. Um, so I think the school bus is facing a more of a pushback because uh, I think it's more complicated for the transit buses. It's just one government entity, one transit agency that can make the decision. But for the school boards, uh, for the school buses, I don't know how many hoops they have to jump through to, to even consider uh, this technology. So. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Florida Today had an editorial which stated that by the year 2050, that is 33 years from now, the human population will surpass the ability of the planet to sustain it. It also stated, I think in another editorial, that by that time there will be no social security or retirement benefits for seniors and that you will be forced to live entirely on the support of family and friends. Since by that time a substantial number of you will be seniors, you need to work on doing something about this now. 
The reality is that I personally heard Paul Ryan state on television that he would like to stop Social Security. This greatly concerns me for a variety of reasons. What will happen to those people who have no one to help them out? And there is something else which I myself have personally experienced that is a total change of attitude toward us seniors which I could see feeding a quality of thought that could easily support the fulfillment of this prediction. I had no wrinkles until I spent a month in the hospital when I came out, I had wrinkles. I couldn't believe the change in attitude I encountered. For the first time since I was a child, I found myself being called honey, sweetie, dear, darling, young lady, like I was a child. One of SCPA's own numbers recommended leadership by young people because, as he said, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So when I was a child, seniors were held in great respect. This is because they were survivors. Those were the days of polio, flu, measles, and other epidemics, and in the days, <clears throat> and the days before antibiotics and some preventive vaccinations. The average human lifespan was shorter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now with a longer lifespan, smaller families, and abortion, the proportion of seniors in the population is considerably larger. I plan to contact AARP with my concerns and recommend you do the same. Now is the time to start work on this issue, and I would urge you to think about preserving resources now. Recycle everything you can. Conservation of resources is a real contribution to the future. And by the way, there's another outfit that's fighting for Social Security right now. It's called the Senior Center. I happen to think of it on my way down, so I don't have the address, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> in addition to this, I heard on television that the predicted sea level rise from melting ice could be as high as 74 feet. This means a real loss of land for the population to live on. With all this in mind, I would urge you to give some real and careful thought regarding the future, forewarned as forearmed with and some recommendations. Work on standing up straight. I have seen very many of my contemporaries prominently bent over from a lifetime of bending over and leaning over. We're made that way, but it doesn't mean to result in a permanent hump or a slump if you work on maintaining your posture, and that means me too. <coughs> and do stand up, sit down exercises. Again, a lot of seniors can find it hard to get up out of a chair after from a lifetime of doing a lot of sitting, so work on it now. Above all, never buy way into the stereotype of age. If you do, you will be your own worst enemy. Yeah. Would you respond to the issue of Social Security, the fact that the SCP is aligned with Flat Rock? <laughs> you explain uh, the Association of Retired Americans? And I was, that, when somebody talked about it earlier, I was going to, I raised my hand, but Paul didn't call him. <laughs> and, it's okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Yes, um, FLARA is, 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 is stems from um, labor, and uh, we have what we call the Senior Leadership Council, which is a part of FLARA, and now we've started having these meetings. We just went, uh, something that came from the meetings is uh, this Monday, uh, myself and a few other people went to visit um, Posey because it was um, Medicare and Medicaid's birthday, 52 years. Also, I wanted, to, I wanted to mention that earlier, I forgot to get on the list, but also um, in August, we're going to be having, and I'll send it out to Space Coast um, Progressive Alliance because to be a part of Flare, all you have to do is, for each person, however, however members you have in the group, it's 25 cents per member per year. So, SPA uh, members are part of Flare. We did it. Yes, yes. But um, uh, we're going to celebrate um, Social Security's birthday in August. So it'll be on the, the website probably. And uh, we went to Posey's office, I say real quickly that we, we tried to get an appointment beforehand. Of course he wasn't there. And Patrick said he wasn't gonna be there. But we went anyway, and guess what? Patrick was there. <laughs> so we got in. He was cordial. Um, and uh, Vicki came to, to join us, but she got there a little late. She had a few things to say about that. <laughs> probably a good thing that she didn't come when she did. But anyway, I thank you for coming anyway, Vicki. Never oh, 
<laughs> Thank you for covering that. Yes. Yeah, now it's time. <laughs> This is cover my topic, which is, um, my name is Karen Houston, and my day job is labor. I am field staff for AFL-CIO. That's one of our most important things. My topic is, it takes a village. Now, if you think about taking a village, first thing comes to mind for those of us who are a little older, I'm not going to claim that too much, but I am. Um, let, let's stem some back when we were kids. Uh, if you did something in school bad, or you went down the street and did something wrong, uh, not only do you get a spanking in school, on the way home somebody might give you a little push along, pop you a little bit, and when you get home, somehow your parents knew about it, and then you get the woodshed or whatever you call it these days. How many of you here know what a switch is? <laughs> Say it's universal, isn't it? <laughs> I used to think it was just a country type kind of thing, maybe here in Florida, but everybody knows what a switch is. So that's what we used to get about punishment. We, got, we turned out to be pretty good people, I think we did, when we got all those spankings. Nowadays we probably be in jail. But, um, you know, but so I thought about taking a village, and the reason I said that is because um, I, I get out in the community quite a bit. I'm a member here. Um, I'm a member of several different organizations. Sometimes I get a little tired because I'm a member of so many. Um, but I found out there's so many things in the, within the community that people don't agree upon. But there's always those one or two things that they do agree upon. And by being in the community a lot, I've learned that, okay, well, there's a lot of single um, issue topics that people don't well, never agree upon. There's gun rights, there's abortion, there's whatever. Uh, there's a lot of them. But we gotta get past that. And one thing that we've learned recently is that if we pull together, we can change things. And I'm talking about the AHCA, you know. The, uh, uh, what is it? What, I don't even want to bring it all the way out, but, but get rid of ACA. I had, I made calls, I sent stuff out to all my dad to prove it, sent out to my affiliates of the labor, all the different unions in the area. I had uh, uh, emails coming from all kinds of different organizations and we all called because we all believe that we need to have healthcare of some kind in this country. I have a sister who worked on, on the job for 31 years, uh, retail, and when she, after those 31 years they had busted it down to part-time, then she found out that she was about to lose her job, that she had cancer. The ACA saved my sister. And I think that it's, it, some type of uh, health care is necessary. But I'm saying this because not just health care. Okay, we might not agree on a whole lot of things. Um, you got so many different topics, so many different things that we, you know, the different groups have a whole lot of passion for. But if we can find that one thing that we all agree upon, just like we did with the well, well uh, the healthcare, that's the village we're talking about. We are the village right here. If we can find that one thing we agree upon and come together, I get about 100 emails a day. A lot of them I know they're gonna be saying, a lot of them I delete. Um, but I have organizations that I belong to, they send some of the same stuff, so I know that we all agree upon a lot of the same things. So, I'm saying to everybody, this is the village, let's take this village, and let's move forward with it. Um, young lady here was talking about, um, I don't know, I can't remember, just how you said it, but you're saying not to, in other words, I'm saying I can take one thing. You were talking about, let's, let's get together and do everything. But we're, ne we're not ever gonna do that. I, I hate to say that, I don't wanna just, you know, be discouraging or anything like that, because people just don't believe in some things, you know? But if we can find the things that everybody believes in, that's the village we're looking for, and that's what I had to say. Thank you. I don't want to ignore comments on you. Oh, I'm sorry. So Ralph Nader wrote a book it's called Unstoppable. He lists 24 areas of what he believes are common things we can all do. Everybody in the country agrees to these things. Wow. So there we go. We're getting something started here. Getting something started. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hi. So, Congress, I think, is on vacation again. But that doesn't mean there's nobody in their office. And that doesn't mean the city we feel got voted down that they're not going to try again. Right. Anybody wants me to repeat this, I'll be here and repeat it all night. 202 
one. <laughs> call early, call often, call every That's day. That's right. Who doesn't know what that number represents? Yes, we, we, we should all know because we've all, all, all of us are calling. I think I would think those people here. Call his office every day. That's right. I did it every day. I sent a lot of emails to our affiliate most days. <laughs> so that's what it takes, and, and if we have proof, <laughs> it works. <laughs> well, we got to change, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Before we hear from our president, who will be the last speaker of the night, we shall draw the lady raffle ticket. So everybody get your stuffed up. Excuse me. I dropped my, my raffle tickets. They were all folded together. Ooh, I couldn't find them. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I swear, when I was up front, I think I dropped it. to sign the felons rights petition this is a voting restoration petition for folks who have served their duty we have a, it's a it's an important petition and it's worth looking at we have uh, some of those up here anybody else anybody else that has not yet had a chance to sign it Karen's got them yes Yes. And one of the things that, um, that was asked there is if you've signed it when it first started, yes. do you sign again? Good question. And they suggest that yes, sign again. So. so if you haven't signed the latest version of it, go ahead and re-sign it. I know I just signed one last week, or th maybe two weeks ago. But I'll tell you what, if you haven't signed the latest version of this, it's worth signing. You can't, it, it's like sign early, sign off, and they, they go through and verify that, you, so, you know, there's, it's not like voting twice. You, you know, you, uh, Go on file. So if you haven't signed it, if you're not sure whether you've signed it, please sign one. Get them, get them to Karen. She'll take care of it. And it's time for the next drawing. Would you? Why don't you guys draw the next ticket since you already... <laughs> hey, while we're waiting here, before I read this out loud, there's something I do want to remind everybody is that next month, Remember, next month we will not be having our meeting here. Our meeting will be held, our next first Thursday will be at the Vieira High School Auditorium, and that's going to be the Alan Grayson event. Remember that the main event is free. It's open to the public just like a regular meetings. We went over there because it's a bigger venue. We're expecting to have a lot more folks there. That is not going to be here. It's going to be at the Vieira High School Auditorium. And yes, let it. No, we're not. We decided against that. We're just going to let folks come, and the only thing you need to register for in advance is if you want to come to the meet and greet a fundraiser event. So, 
Our ticket number is four, three, one, four, four, five. <laughs> Again, it's, it's four, three, one, four, four, five. <laughs> and there we go, one last time. Four, three, one, four, four, five. Is it Karen? Yeah. All right. Congratulations. Thanks again to the John Cox for supplying this beautiful booty. This is really neat stuff. We thank you so much for supporting the SCPA. Okay, and I will come off the time and make it feel good. <laughs> Hey everybody, thank you very much for being here tonight. After everybody's fantastic presentation, mine's going to seem a little bit light, but it's important. So if I could have your attention. A total eclipse of the sun is one of nature's most amazing spectacles. On August 21st, the moon will pass in front of the sun, and its shadow will race from Portland, Oregon to just north of Charleston, South Carolina. You should be on that line of totality to experience what few humans have ever seen, totality. Solar eclipses are rare. The moon's shadow usually grazes the earth once every year or two, but mostly in scarcely inhabited polar or ocean regions. This year's eclipse slices through the center of the USA. The last time that America saw totality was almost 40 years ago. The next will be in 2024. Throughout human history, tens of thousands of years, people that have experienced totality have been shocked with fear and foreboding. Solar eclipses have triggered conflict, sacrifice, and even ended wars. They have almost universally been seen as evil omens. Considering the evil that inhabits the White House, Maybe there is something to that. The Chinese began seeing patterns in eclipse timing almost 5,000 years ago. But most scientific understanding of the how and why of eclipses has been achieved over the past century and a half. Obviously, the moon orbits the Earth about once a month. And that's where the word month comes from. What's not so obvious is that the moon's orbit is tilted five degrees from the Earth's orbit around the sun. If it weren't that way, we would have a solar eclipse every month at the new moon and a lunar eclipse at every full moon. If you stay home, you stay here in Brevard County, this is what you'll see. It's just a partial eclipse. The sky won't, die, won't, won't really darken that much. It'll be just kind of like as if a cloud moved in front of the sun. And that's all you'll see. You'll have to wear eye protection, like welding glasses, and the right kind of welding glasses. These are called number 14s. This is arc welding, not your average gas welding glasses. You might use little eclipse glasses. These aren't as good, but they work. You can make a little pinhole camera. There are other things you can see, but this is all you're going to see. That's it. This is what you'll see if you just stay home. I don't have time to explain all of the mechanics of an eclipse, but I am here to tell you that you need to travel north by car, plane, bus, or train to the center line to see totality. <laughs> Now the duration of this eclipse is about one and a half hours from start to finish, but totality will last two and a half minutes in Charleston, South Carolina, which is the closest place to see it. At totality, you will see things that you have never seen before. As the moon snuffs out the sun's disk, you will see for the first time in your life what the rest of the sun actually looks like. Ruby red chromosphere, prominences, then the magnificent corona. The pearl white corona is dynamic and looks different at every eclipse. The temperature may drop 20 degrees Fahrenheit and people will be gasping. Some will cry. Animals will react too. Birds fly home to roost, dogs bark. But 
You do not need eye protection at totality. You will be standing at the you will be staring at the blackest damned hole in the sky. The planets and the stars are visible. And by the way, we can bring the lights back up. Thank you. And suddenly, when you see that, you will get a deep personal realization that you are standing on a ball that is circling through space around a star. The solar system is laid out on either side of the sun in a line. You will see Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and you'll see them all in a line with your very own eyes. You don't need a telescope. You'll see it, and it's unbelievable. Those two and a half minutes will pass in a flash, and it all then unwinds in reverse. You will be stunned if you go. You have a choice to make. Forgive me for being so bold as to say, but in the last 45 years of flying to the top of the atmosphere and diving to the depths of the ocean, traveling the globe to explore mountains, deserts, deserts, valleys, canyons, and the world's great cities, I have never seen a spectacle as amazing as totality. Do not miss this. Take your family and friends, because this may be the last chance in your lifetime to experience this. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. yes. What time? It's about 2.30 in the afternoon. The, it's, the, 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 total, the total period of this, again, is about an hour and a half. If you have, let me tell you, unlike previous eclipses, there is more information online right now, good information, that you can see uh, that I've ever seen before. It's phenomenal, the amount of information. There's a, a website called Vox, VOX.com, and they have some fantastic interactive stuff. NASA has a fantastic bunch of interactive Eclipse stuff right now. There is a, a website specific to the 2017 USA Eclipse. Fantastic information. Right up here, by the way, stuff that I have available for you to look at. If you want to see more, you want to see a specific map of where to go, what to see, what the effect is like. Yes, sir, you had a question? Yes, if we turn over our plane, will you pilot it? I'd probably kill us on the way. It would be terrible. <laughs> Actually, Linda and I are going to be going to Tennessee. We're going to be meeting my sister who's coming down from Pittsburgh. My sister is coming in from Indiana. We're all going to go to a place on the side of a mountain that we picked out. I flew up there actually a few months ago to scope it out. So we've got a location. One of the things that you've got to see, that's an amazing, and it's an unbelievable experience. We've, Lynn and I have been lucky enough to see eclipses both in Curacao and in southern Mexico, and we've seen an annular eclipse in Alamogordo. And I'll tell you what, guys, there's nothing like it. It's amazing. What you see as the eclipse approaches you is the shadow moving at a supersonic speed toward you. And if you're up in an elevated position like the side of a mountain, it is absolutely breathtaking. The question. Another question. I just want to say, Vicki and I have reservations in Greenville, South Carolina. We're going to be on a golf course. The other six weeks there, we've got the last room. Our grandkids are coming down from Maryland. We're going to make a deal. It's a big deal. This is a big deal, folks. So if you hadn't heard about it, if you hadn't thought about it, and I know a lot of people work, and this is on a Monday, and it's like, oh, God, how am I going to do this? You know what? Screw it. <laughs> if, if, if there were people that were saying, oh, there's another one in 2024, that one is going to be farther away. And you never know. You never know what's going to happen between now and then. This may be your last opportunity. Yes? How often does an eclipse happen anywhere on the planet? About once every 18 months, there's a total solar eclipse. But they're not always solar, they're not uh, always total. They can be annular, they can be hybrid. This is a good damned eclipse. It's not the longest. Uh, it's two and a half minutes of eclipse time. The next one in 2024 will be longer. But I'll tell you what, guys, this is your chance to get in a car. Here's the deal. It's about... Uh, I'm going to stop in just a second. 380 miles from Brevard to Charleston. It's about five hours of driving time each way. That's nothing. For this experience, guys, to be on totality, you don't... You don't want to sit at home and look at this. You really don't. Trust me. You want to go see this. So I've taken up more than my time, and I'll tell you what, I'm happy to answer anybody's questions about this afterward. Do we have anybody else that, that's got anything uh, going on? Paul, back to you. I think everybody deserves a round of applause. Yeah. Hang out a little bit. I, 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 I actually, 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 I
You heard that, right? <laughs> so, action items. Before we leave tonight, we have enough time for you to talk to whoever, what speaker that, that turned you on? Somebody who has an action item. There are enough opportunities here for people to get together, talk to somebody, make something happen as a result of this meeting. If you keep what you learned tonight to yourself, then we have failed. What's the point in us coming together and having these meetings? Our lesson tonight is to spread the word. Tell other people what you've heard. Tell other people, get other people involved in things that are important. Change the community, you can do it. Remember, our next meeting is going to be Alan Grayson. Uh, it's going to be the first Thursday in September up at the Vieira. High School Auditorium. I hope to see you there. Thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful night. Drive safely.